<clears throat> hey, y'all. Uh, I don't like doing Dr. Phil moments and being all serious. I know that's good content for some people, and it was for me, too, for a long time because I'm a very intellectual kind of dude, and I got a lot of opinions on a lot of different things, and people like to hear that. <clears throat> this is one of them moments. I'm about to make a Cinderella statement. And y'all know what I mean, or if you don't, go look at some of my old videos. I make a lot of those. A Cinderella statement is a statement you can make that fits a lot of feet. But it's not meant for one particular foot. <clears throat> let, that, let that resonate. A Cinderella statement is a general statement that a lot of people are going to feel like, he secretly means that about me. No, I don't. Some people is going to go, my foot fit that, so if the shoe fits, wear it. <clears throat> That's not what that means. People are so sensitive and so self-absorbed that you think everything that applies to you applies to you. Not necessarily. It could be. Now, if you can relate and learn from it, then by all means do so. But... Someone in my position where I have all of these, for instance, friends, and I influence all of these people with things that I say, and I have a life experience, <clears throat> and I want to go, okay, I want to see if anyone else has this experience so they can learn from it. So the character, Rooster the Goat, not the person Roger Watson makes a comment <clears throat> people in my everyday life and people in my social media life are all going to relate to this when that happens you have to understand did Roger Watson say it to a direct person or did Rooster the Goat say it to a variety of people so that I can purposely put myself in a position that people can relate to. That's what I'm doing. That is what a Cinderella statement is. As an example, if you tell somebody, say, look, man, I had somebody give me some advice today. Their advice sucks. Stop taking advice from somebody. And then that person that gave you advice is going to go, that's for me. Fuck it. I'm never going to give Rooster advice again. That's not what I see it. So, this is one of them statements. <clears throat> I struggled last night with sleep. I had bad nightmares. Uh, and somebody with my level of depression and PTSD is prescribed Lexapro. And if I'm off of it, it starts with the nightmares and then it starts with me just driving down the road and seeing an 18-wheeler come at me and thinking, uh, I just want to just take a left and just head on. Now, the only thing that stops me is that guy don't deserve that. If he lives through it, he don't deserve the scar that I would have left. I don't want, I don't want my last mark in life to be that. Or you're driving in the mountains and you're thinking, I'm just going to go off this curve. Somebody's got to find that. Somebody's got to clean that up. <clears throat> so when I have them thoughts, that's the kind of stuff that brings me back to reality. I don't want to cause a mess. I don't want my final mark on this world to be a mess that someone else has to clean up. And that's what brings me back to my reality of saying, okay, bro. Let's get our shit together. You know, you've thought about it. You, you've you been out there in depression land long enough. Let's pick our boot strings up and go. Now, I know people in my life mean well. But people with depression who have people in their life who says, you don't need that medicine. You just need to suck it up. You don't need that medicine. You just need to do better. You just need to get out more. You need to do more. You need sunlight. You need... They're not doctors, okay? They're giving you advice based off of their life experiences. They're not 
the people that you need to be listening to. I tried that. I was told that. I was given that advice. Sunlight, get up, do things. So I started doing things and I'm happy. I'm feeling good. That is when your your medicine is your most important friend. Because you're thinking, okay, I'm doing good. Uh, I'm feeling good. I can do without my medicine for a day or two. You're doing good because of the medicine, not because you're outside, not because you're in the sunlight, not because you're walking 10 or 12 miles. That's not what's, it's the medicine that's making you feel better. When you really have something wrong with you and the medicine is what connects the dots. Uh, I did that. I'm like, okay, I'm going to try to shake this medicine, try to outgrow it. I was off of it for two days. Now, what the people in your life don't realize is the nightmares are vivid to a depression person. They're real. The, the, the nightmares can drive you to the edge. And if you're not strong enough to pull yourself back, you're not coming back. Uh... The nightmares for me last night kept me up all night to the point that I didn't really start to get to sleep till 7, 8 o'clock this morning. And then I slept till damn near 4 o'clock. And then to have those same people that, that care about you chop on you and drive you and say you sleep too much of this. They're always sharp with their words, stern with their encouragement and to the point that it it drives you away and you're in a crucial situation because if you say lighten up then you're scared they're going to clam up and go with well, I'm just going to just I'm just going to just whatever I guess my opinion just don't matter I guess and then there you are stuck feeling like the bad guy because they're turning it on you it's almost like dealing with narcissism. Uh, somebody with narcissism, or if they're a narcissist, they don't. They can give criticism in the in the excuse of to build you up, but they can't take rejection at all. When you tell them, "Hey, you know, maybe this is a situation you don't, you can't give me advice on," then they want to shut down and not give you advice on anything. That's not. True, that's not what you're saying. Now, there's several people in my life who are going to think that that this can relate to them. And it may can relate to them, but I'm not referring to one special person. I get advice from people on the phone, face to face, in my personal life, in my social media life. This could I could be talking about ten people right now, and every one of them ten people are going to think it's only about them. No, it's not. Listen to what I say. Take away from it what you can benefit from. Leave the rest of it alone. Because I could be trying to give Angela advice and creating this scenario to fit Angela's life and George that's in my life may think it's all about him. No, don't make it about you when I'm trying to give a... I'm trying to speak to 700,000 people at one time. Not every 700 and something thousand people are going to think it's strictly about them. Take away from it what you can take away from it. Go, okay, you know, if I'm that kind of person who loves to give advice, maybe I need to be more open to their response when it comes to my advice. I was off my medicine two days and uh, almost didn't make it through the night. I don't think they realize the severity of their advice and how strong people take it. And because of their advice, I very well might not have been here tonight. Because I'm doing what's best for them and not what's best for me. 
What's best for me is to take my medicine at night like I'm supposed to so that I stay happy. You know, you got to live for yourself, people. You got to do what's best for you and just hope the people in your life understand. But find you a doctor you trust. Find you a counselor you trust. Because they have your life in your hands. If they misdiagnose you, you may not wake up. If they overdiagnose you, you may never understand life. If they underdiagnose you, you may doubt everything you got. If they refuse to diagnose you because they're old school and they think you need to just toughen up because you're weak, then you may end your own life. You know, depression was always a stigma when I was growing up. Oh, if you depressed, it's just because you, you know, you weak. You weak. Oh, uh, if your child's acting up and they got ADD, oh, they just need a belt. Let me tell you something. I was a parent of a child with ODD, ADD, ADHD. That's a clusterfuck of alphabets that if you're not uh, qualified to give advice on, you need to personally shut the fuck up. Because you people out here who go... Oh, that ain't no sense as ADD. Oh, that's OOD. No, I ain't, that kid just needs a belt. Your ass needs to shut the fuck up. Because parents that are going through that, who have children that are either diagnosed or undiagnosed, they have a real struggle on their hands. You don't need to burden them with your no child having ass or your child don't have that. So you just want to go give some free advice. You need to shut the fuck up. And go back and play in your safe circle. Because you're not qualified to speak on that kind of parent. I was that person. Who said, that child ain't nothing wrong with me. Just need a, a belt and some discipline. I was that hypocrite. I was. And God put me in a position where my eyes got open and opened wide. When I had a son that was nine years old. And dug a hole in a mobile home with a screwdriver because a, a babysitter put him outside because he was cutting up too much and wouldn't let him in through the front door. So he took a screwdriver and dug a hole in the side of the trailer and climbed through that bitch from outside where he, in his eyes, he came in, he didn't go through the front door. So he did it like he was told. But the lady who was one of these people who uh, felt that we were just trying to zombify our kid with medication she refused to give it to him and she had an animal on her hands that she couldn't control so uh i say this if you're strong enough to give advice out of the love you have for someone i'm gonna say it again if you are strong enough to give advice to someone you care a lot about be compassionate when they resort resort back to you with i've tried that it didn't work i have to do it this way be supportive or either find a burial plot and be willing to attend a funeral because you never know the level. Unless you know it all, treat it like you know nothing. Unless you know everything, treat it like you know nothing. Because you're playing electrician in a head that's wired different. And... Um, Nobody wants to bury their friend. Nobody wants to bury their friend. I was off my medicine for two days, y'all. And the first, the first two days was fine. Last night made the night of the second day. It was fine. This, the medicine was in my system slowly wearing off. 
When I was asleep, it weared off completely. The nightmares hit immediately. It hit immediately. And when I tell you they're vivid, they feel real. So go easy on your people. If you got somebody in your life who has something they're struggling with, be more compassionate than an advisor. Because the moment they follow your advice, if it's not the right advice, neither of you are going to like the outcome. Neither of you are going to like the outcome. I'm not missing my medicine again. I was closer to death today than I've ever been in my life. I don't want to go down that road. I don't want to go down that road. I'm going to do what I know is best for me. And I hope that everyone in this situation does what's best for them too so that we all can see each other tomorrow. Love y'all.